Amen. Amen. Who wants revival? Yeah. Yeah. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Um, let's pray for a moment. Father, we thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, for your faithfulness. And thank you, Lord, for uh, Pastor Foster, Lord, who has a real sincere desire, puts money and time where his mouth is. And uh, Lord, um, has a desire to really have revival, not only for his church, but for this nation. And Lord, we realize that w without revival, no matter what we do here tonight, without revival, this country is doomed. Amen. And uh, so, Lord, we realize that, um, that these meetings are vital. These meetings are essential. Yeah. Oh, Lord, we, we need to, we need a move of God. We need to move a God in, in, in our pulpits. We need to move a God in our pews. We need to move a God in the house of God. And so, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would meet with us tonight in a very special and powerful way. Lord, uh, not in a, just in an emotional way, but in a life-changing way. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 20. What I'm, what I'm going to try to do by the good grace of God, I'm going to try to give some biblical clarity to why this country is so jacked up and, and, um, why, and why it's so jacked up and where we're, going, where we're heading. Because I believe that the, one of the problems that we have about revivals, I, I think a lot of people just don't think we really need it. Right. I'm, I'm, for real, I just think that they don't really see the severity of the matter. You know, they think revival is, you know, well, we just come to church and, you know, and uh, we sing, uh, sing some songs and, you know, we shout them out a little bit and then we go home and someone said two weeks later, we need revival again. <laughs> Amen. How many times you got to die? You know, revival is supposed to be reviving you. Shoot, by the time we revive you, the devil done killed you. You've got to keep coming back and forth. Before you know, you know, this is supposed to be a house of God. This ain't a funeral home. Amen. So, so you know, we need to realize that either we're doing something wrong or, or we're faking it. Yeah, you know, they got that saying around our way, fake it till you make it. But it don't work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, this message ain't gonna be. Uh, it's gonna, you know, well, I'm here till uh, Monday, but I'm gonna say this is a hit and run message usually. <laughs> this message is usually out the door. We're gonna read verses one through five of Exodus chapter twenty. It says, "And God spake." all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a Jealous God. Now, now I want you to pay attention to the last verse of Scripture that we're going to read here. This last portion. Because this is very important. He says, visiting the iniquities of who? Of the fathers. I, I, I think that one of the big problems of why we're not having revival is because we're not really aiming our guns at the right people. Yeah, we got to stop aiming at the Democrats because they don't live here. Yeah. Amen. They ain't here tonight. Right. Yeah. Amen. The Democrats are not here. Paul Biden, he don't know where he at. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but the Bible says, visiting the iniquities of the fathers. And then the Bible gives us insight to why things are so messed up. He says, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. 
So we, we see a, a principle that God is trying to, to, to reveal to us. That we have in America a generational problem. You know, I think even the world knows that we're in trouble because, you know, right now we have generational Z. Yeah, right. They don't run out of alphabets. They know it's over. Yeah. Right. No, seriously. Seriously, uh, they know it, it, uh, this is the last generation. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. I mean, we're living in a generation that don't even know what a, you know, don't even know what a female is. Right. You got you got these young kids running around there, you know, you know, thinking they're a dog and a cat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm seriously. I mean, you, you, you're talking about you're talking about kids at ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. Literally think they are an animal, yeah. Yeah. And, and and the schools are making you know, but you know, fixing making sure that they're recognized. I don't know about you, but I think somebody's demon possessed. We're living in a very wicked time. And the Bible is saying to us, this is a generational problem where the iniquities of the fathers in the first generation are passed on to the children in the second generation. And the fathers in the second generation, their iniquities are passed on to the children to the third generation and the fathers of the third generation their iniquities are passed on to the fourth generation yeah. so we have four generations where we see iniquity going from one generation to the other right. yes. but this is all the process that's only worked through fathers that. Oh. amen yeah. I hate to tell you this but you can blame homosexuality on fathers right yeah. I know this is not what you think it is, but it is. Right. And I can prove it to you in the Bible. Yeah. You can blame all the, all, the, all the madness and all the moral depravity that's going on in America yeah. on fathers. Yeah. Right. Turn your Bible. Let's, 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 let's see this. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 1. Everybody knows this chapter of Scripture. I'm sure you've been there more than once. But this Scripture gives you detail to what each iniquity that the fathers commit is. So in Romans chapter 1, and we're going to pick up, amen, at verse 20. Okay, when you have it, just say amen. amen. Now, how much time we got? Work? Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, this is serious, because... We're not going to have a revival until we know. It's like this. Some people ain't going to get out of the house until they, play, until they really realize it's on fire. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, right. Somebody can, you know, somebody can preach, hey, it's on fire! But they don't smell nothing. They don't feel nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Everybody, everybody else seems to be doing the same thing, so why should I move? Right. We got, listen, we got to stop all this emotional when there's no motion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Somebody got to, you know, we're talking about a change. Altar is fine, but you can't go to this altar, amen, and then get back up and then back here next week and for the same thing. Right. Yeah. Right. It ain't supposed to work like that. Right. You know, I believe when Jesus told the woman who was caught in adultery, go and, and send some more. <laughs> We don't tell people that no more. I mean, literally, we don't tell people, go, okay, okay, God forgive you, right? He's forgiving you. Now go and try your best. Go and try your best now. I'll be here when you fall again, because you know, someone told me that it takes five years for you to get over, for you to um, recover from the uh, um, pornography addiction. Five years. Well, I guess Jesus is out of business. Five years. How many of you got the salvation that when you got saved, change came with it? Yeah, we got the salvation now where I went to one church and, and they had, I'm not joking you, the church is packed with men, all addicted to pornography. I said to them, I said to, I said to my friend, I said, I feel sorry for the sisters who belong to this church. Who are they going to marry? <laughs> <laughs> the 
listen to me. The power of God is gone from the church. It used to be back in the day when a drunk got saved, he was no longer a drunk. It used to be when a drug addict got saved, he was no longer a drug addict. It used to be when somebody was addicted to porn and they got saved, he was no longer addicted. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's going to be liberty. Now we give them a five years workout plan. And the poor wife's got to deal with him for five years. Something wrong with that picture, yeah. insurance. That's not the that's not Bible salvation. Right. If listen, if Jesus can can deliver a man who was demon possessed with legions of demons, yeah. Yeah. Amen. And now and listen, and do something that he can't seem to do in the, in the independent Baptist churches anymore, Amen. Put people in their right mind and throw clothes on them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I'm meddling. <laughs> Verse, verse 21 gives the characteristics of the first generation. It says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What was the iniquity of the fathers in the first generation? They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into a image made like corruptible man and to birds and full-footed beasts and creeping things. That's the iniquity. Uh, today we, we are not serving the God of the Bible. I'm sorry to, to let you know that. We're serving the God of the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and God knows how many chances he's going to give you. We're serving the God of love. The God that doesn't, do, regardless of who you are, what you're doing, it doesn't matter. God just loves you. Yeah. Now, we preach, I mean, we, we don't like, uh, uh, you know, these preachers that, that, that preach prosperity and everything and God is love and coming. We, but, you know, we, we've kind of adopted some of that doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. When's the last time you heard a message on hell? I mean, really? What well, the last you heard a message on sin? Yeah, right. Amen. No, I mean sin. But it, but it really banging it out. Yeah. Yeah. People want, we got too many evangelists that want to come back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got too many that want to come back. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Listen, I think we're living in a day and time now. Well, we ought to preach the truth. And if people get mad, they just get mad. If people get mad and just walk out, they just walk out. Amen. Amen. I mean, just, I mean, the country's going to hell. I mean, what, what else? What else? What else? I mean, what else? Look, the Bible says that they rejected the glory of God. Do you know the Bible tells us that the image of God, or the glory of God, is a, is, a, is a force that inhibits you to sin. That's why the scripture says, when you and I sin, we say we fall short. Of what? His glory. Every time you sin, is because you have a distorted image of who he is. Because when you see who he is, you ain't gonna, you, you're not going to do that. Because who he is provokes fear. And that's missing in the house of God today. People don't fear God. You, you got folks, amen, that come in church and cause all kind of trouble and everything and, 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 and give the preacher a headache and got some preachers, you know, vacating the premises, leaving. Don't have no fear of God because they got a false concept of God. And, and I hate to tell you this, but it's the preacher's fault. Because we're, we're, not, we're not giving the people a proper 
perception of who God is. Our God is a what? Consuming fire. Listen to me. Listen to me. You know, Elijah had to deal with a bunch of individuals that were backslidden. And when he said, you know, you need to, you need to make some decisions. You need to make some serious decisions. If you're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve Baal. And the Bible says they didn't say a word. They didn't say a word. But what he did was this. He knew that the people had a false concept of God. So what he did, he said, I'm going to give a challenge whereby people can be able to see that our God is a what? Consuming fire. And what happened? God manifested himself. The people fell down in worship and they got rid of the idols. That's what needs to happen in the house of God. Amen. We need preachers, amen, full of the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Burn the church down. I tell people, he said, well, you're going to turn the church up. I said, I'm going to tell you something. If, if it ain't nailed down in Jesus, you don't need it anyway. And, if, and listen, Jesus preached a message and people left. And he never went to them saying, oh, please don't leave, please don't leave. Jesus. When members tell me the Lord is leading me somewhere else, I said, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Because you've been giving me a headache the whole, I mean, the whole time you've been here. And finally, he's answered my prayer. <laughs> And I'm glad you're in agreement that he's leading you out. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Turn your Bible. Turn your, turn your Bible. To, we're going to look at two scriptures real quick. Turn to Exodus. This is so, this is so true. Exodus in uh, chapter 24. Look at verse 17. Because it shows you the image that God wanted the people to have. Because that image was, a, was supposed to be an image that would inhibit people from sinning. Right. If you have it, say amen. Exodus chapter 24, verse 17. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like what? Devouring fire on top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. If you go back to Exodus chapter 20 and look at if you will, real quickly, at verse 20. <coughs> if you have to say amen. amen. It says, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to do what? To prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that you what? No, no. Let's go, but let's go to the New Testament. Amen. Because, you know, some folks don't like the old. <laughs> Let's turn to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Real revival hurts. It does. I mean, it does. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. There's no such thing as, there's no historical evidence, especially in this country, where revival didn't hurt first, where revival didn't break people down first. Revival ain't no hallelujah, praise the Lord. I'm sorry, saints. It ain't. How, uh, revival is God have mercy upon my wicked and unworthy soul. Revival is when you and I humble ourselves under the hand of a mighty God. And that goes from the pulpit to the door. We all have to examine ourselves. I'm a father. How many fathers are in here? Okay. We're either the, we're either we're either going to be the reason for the downfall of America, or we're going to be the reason why God 
spares this country. The fathers here. All depends on whether or not you've been tampering with the image of God. The Bible says, wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may do what? Serve God. I like this. What? Yeah, not your way. Not your way. God's way. What's acceptable to him, acceptable with what? With reverence and what else? Godly fear. Now, what provokes all this? For our God is a consuming fire. Right. See, we're, we don't, we don't, we're not living in an age of preachers that are known back in the day for being preachers who preach fire and brimstone. That, that's gone. Them preachers are gone. And to be honest with you, you probably couldn't get in too many of our churches. The preachers that were preaching 40 years ago couldn't, no. Because mm -mm. they'd be talking about all your business. All your business. Now you see how the, you see how things have kind of tom, toned down. You see how things have toned down a little bit? Mm -hmm. You see how the Holy Ghost all of a sudden, he got quiet. The Holy Ghost got quiet. You know we in trouble when the Holy Ghost get quiet. Right? Now, let's go back. Let's go back to, to Romans chapter 1. And let's look at each, each, each situation. The first problem, remember, the problem is the fathers. The, the first generation of fathers rejected the image of God. They, they made God more center friendly. He's more center friendly now. Come as you are. He loves you as you are. No need for repentance. Yeah. I heard somebody say that repentance is, is, is a work salvation. Oh, well, I just heard Jesus said, except you repent, you shall likewise pass. And I also heard that repentance is not a work of the flesh. It's the work of God. The Bible says it is he who worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Yes. Amen. You can't repent. You don't have the power to. Right. It takes the grace of God to repent. Yes. It's the work of God. Yes. Amen. But look at this. He says this. And going back to Romans. Look at, look at the consequence. Verse 24. Is now we're seeing the consequences of the iniquity of the fathers being passed on. To the second generation. 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to what? To uncleanness. To the lust of their own hearts. To the design of their own bodies between themselves. What did God do? The Bible says when the fathers of the first generation committed, committed iniquity. What was the iniquity? They changed the image of God. They made God a more sinner friendly God. They made him more like Man, that's the reason why we have rock music in our churches because God loves because the God God loves rock music. Y'all didn't know that, and you know we gotta have rap music because you know God is a hip God. God's got rhythm. Amen. He likes it. And you know, good and well, God don't you know not the God of the Bible. I tell someone, I said, do you know what rock and roll means? Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll, that, 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 that has a sexual connotation right. to it. Right. Yeah. When a man says he's been rocking and rolling all night, he's not talking about church. Right. 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 You can't bring that in church right. and call it Christian rock and roll all night? That don't work. Right. That's not God. Right. Right. But that's the reason why we got so much junk in the church. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because people have changed the image of God and made God more like them. Yeah. Now, we have a consequence, and the consequence is moral. Yeah. The consequence is sexual sins. And this is what initiated the sexual revolution in this country. Yeah. You can sit up here and preach all day long about, about the sexual problem. And you can preach against homosexuality all you want. You can preach against lesbianism all you want. You can preach against all kinds of sexual sins all you want. Just turn the pulpit down. But if you neglect the reason why we have it, yeah. uh -oh. right. yeah. 
So you got you if, if your house is flooding, you gotta get the water out of the house, but you gotta also find where the water's coming from. Because if you don't, you're just gonna be doing this forever and ever. Amen, somebody. And, right, and that's the reason why we haven't seen any change in the church. And the reason why we haven't seen any change in the country. Amen. Listen, I'm telling you right now. We are going. We are. We are hitting in some serious, serious problems. Look what the look what the fathers in the second generation did. Verse twenty-four tells us the iniquities of the second generation of fathers. What did they do? They changed the what? They changed the truth of God into a lie and did what? And worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. This is, I, I honestly believe this is a perfect example of evolution. You say, well, you know, we don't believe in evolution. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Evolution impacted the church, and it challenged the Bible. And people started coming in with all kind of different theories. Well, you know, God didn't mean uh, six actual days. He meant more like uh, a metaphor. Like, you know, I, he could have meant six million. Yeah. Or, you know, then you come up with the idea of the gap theory. You remember the gap theory? Yeah. 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 That, that was the church trying to, trying to justify the biblical teachings with science. Yeah. You know, only the smart folks could have figured that out. <laughs> us, us dumb folks, you know, we just, we're well, the Bible. <laughs> the wisdom of man. Right. Rather than the power of God. Right. That's a big problem today, even now. Even in our independent fundamental circles. Right. We have more respect for titles, amen, than we have power. It's a big difference. Wow. Yeah. Just because you're a pastor of 2,000 members, I've seen, pa listen, I've, 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 seen, I've, seen, I've seen pastors in big congregations. Amen. Yeah. They couldn't fight their way out of a spiritual paper bag, a wet paper bag, if their life depended on it. Right. I'm just being honest with you. Yeah. They couldn't. Right. Saints of God, we better wake up around here. Right. I asked somebody a question. I said, would you rather have money? Would you rather have, listen, especially for you preachers, would you rather have a big congregation and a, and a, and a big salary or the power of God? Yeah. What, would you, what would you rather have? Well, well, how many of you, come on preachers, how, would you, would, how many of you would choose the power of God? Yeah, yeah okay, we'll cut your salary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll cut your salary. You know, we don't even we don't even as preachers anymore seek the power of God. We just come up we just come up in the pulpit, pray a couple of seconds of prayer, Lord bless bless, bless and we think God's gonna you know God's gonna fix it for us. Yeah. It don't work like that. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that we will only find him when we seek him with our whole heart. Amen. God is looking for a man. Yeah. Amen. Whereby he can show himself strong, yeah. amen, whose heart is halfway? No. 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 Whose heart is what? Perfect, holy, completed, completely yielded, surrendered to him. Yeah. And that's missing today from the pulpit to the door. Yeah. I'm telling the gospel truth whether you like it or not. Yeah. It's missing. You got a lot of half-hearted Christians and a lot of half-hearted, amen, preachers. You say, why do you say that? Because COVID showed you all. COVID, God sent COVID to show how many hypocrites we had. I'm so sick and tough. Look, I grew up, I've been in the independent cycle for, for over uh, uh, 45 years. I remember some of them brothers would say, bless God. The governor ain't going to never shut my church down. Bless God, I have my shotgun. And I was... I got your bless God. 
COVID came. Yeah. Yeah. Government said, do this. Yeah. Yeah. Government said, do that. Yeah. Government said, liquor store stay open. Yeah. Abortion clinic stays open. Yeah. Church, you're not relevant. Yeah. You do this. You do that. Yeah. 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 We got churches that, uh, where I'm from that's still closed. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You got folks that are supposed to be saved. Scared to die and go to heaven. Stuck up in their house. Scared to come out. Living behind a mask. The Bible says that we've overcome the devil by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb. And that we love not our lives even unto death. COVID showed a whole lot of people. Amen. A whole lot of ministries. Amen. Amen. They weren't as spiritual as they preached they were. Amen. We live in a day and time now where we're going to be a... I tell my young men, oh, I think the Lord's called me to preach. I said, you want to go to jail? Are you willing to go to jail? Yeah. Because if you ain't willing to go to jail, God ain't called you to preach. Right. We're living in... I just heard that in, in Canada, they, they're actually locking people up. Yeah. Right. Because you won't, let a, you won't address a person according to what they want to be identified as. Yeah. It's coming here. Yeah. Now what you going to do? Yeah. Tiptoe? Yeah. Figure out a way how to get around it? This is ridiculous. Right. Someone said, you got to be careful, Pastor, what you say online because, you know, the government, I said, government. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. I, I told the Lord, I want to make sure that when he comes, he knows exactly whose side I'm on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have to, I don't want to be looking around too long like, I'm, is he really, you know, what is he doing? Yeah. Amen. Uh, it's, it's a gospel truth. Look. Verse 26 gives us the consequence of the fathers in the second generation how it's passed on to the third. Look at verse 26. For this cause God gave them up, speaking of the third generation, to what? Okay, that's why we have homosexuality. That's why it ain't going nowhere. Because we don't deal with fathers. We don't let fathers know you can jack up four generations. Don't you know that? You can jack up four generations. You can jack them all up. All the preaching in heaven and hell ain't going to change a thing. If a man, if a father doesn't wake up in the church. Amen. I'm telling you the gospel truth. Whether you like it or not, it's the truth. You say, what's the hope of America? Trump. <laughs> I'm so, look, I'm, I'm touching an idol now. I had to drink some water. Somebody asked me, did you vote for Biden? I was like, I had to be lost and on my way to hell to vote for Biden. But, but, but hold on for a minute. I haven't voted for a president. Says Bush. You say why? Well, see, the, the, my problem is, is I, I can't give my support other than prayer. Y'all do what y'all want to do, but I'm talking about me. Uh, my brother's cursing and carrying on and using the Lord's name in vain and everything and. See, see, look, I couldn't, you know I couldn't vote for Obama. Even though most of my black brothers and sisters did, but I couldn't vote for no Obama because I'm saved. Yeah, and I couldn't vote for Trump because I got a conscience. Every time he would cuss, I'd just go, and when he said he didn't need no forgiveness, I was like, oh, Lord. So, you know, 
But everybody do what you got to do. I'm commanded to pray, so that's my support. I support my presidents, amen, in prayer. But I ain't voting for no, I don't vote for demons. Well, you got to vote for the least, the less, the less, you know, the, the devil, the demon. I can't vote for a demon, I can't vote for the devil. Sorry. I don't, I'm sorry, I can't do it. You say, I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm saying I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. Amen. So everybody's mad. Black folks mad because I didn't vote for Obama. White folks mad because I didn't vote for Trump. <laughs> Poor black people can't win. <laughs> can't win, brother. Can't win. The Bible says that we're in the third generation. And in this third generation, we see that they're turned over to sodomy. And it's going from worse to worse. And then the, third, the fathers in the third generation, they do something. And the Bible says in verse 28, the Bible says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. If you look at each generation, the fathers in the first generation reject the image of God. The fathers in the second generation reject the word of God, which represents Christ. And then the fathers in the third generation rejects the work of the Holy Spirit. The three witnesses that the Bible says that is needed for a death sentence by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established, this country is going to hell. This country, this country is going to be judged. Now, you might not like it, but it's going to happen. And, and God's word is telling us as, as believers, you know, you better look at this. And see what's going on. Stop complaining about what's happening and do something about it. Amen. We're not here to play games, amen. Right. amen. Right. We're not here to preach you happy. Yeah. I'm, not in a, I'm not in a black church. You know, we've got to preach people happy in a black church. Yeah, we've got to preach you happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to preach you happy. <laughs> hey, man, we ain't here for that. We ain't here to take no happy pill. Amen. We're here for revival. Amen. Look at this. The Bible says God gave them over to a what kind of mind? And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing the last, the generation of Z. They can't figure out what a woman is. They can't figure out what the gender is. Right. And they even have this delusional idea that they are an animal. Now listen to me very carefully because I'm going to show you something in the scripture. Turn your Bible to the book of Genesis. And I, I appreciate your, your, um, your, your patience because usually by this time people be getting up and walking out. So I appreciate, I know either you're being very kind or just, you know, thinking that, well, it wouldn't look right if I walk out. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you, usually they're out of here by now. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 16, God tells Abraham about what's going to happen to the nation of Israel and how they're going to spend, you know, 400 years into, in slavery. But he then tells them that you're going to come back to the land and you're going to take this land over, but you've got to come back in the fourth generation. Not the third, the fourth. Now you're saying, well, they've been gone for 400 years. What do you mean the fourth generation? They're going to be gone for 400 years. What do you mean the fourth generation? That doesn't make any sense. What he's doing, he's, he's, he's lining this up with a principle that we just went over. I used to 
used to wonder why God would wipe out a whole group of people, children and all. I used to like, I used to have, be honest, I used to have a problem with that. Like, wow, that's 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 pretty rough. Yeah. Yeah. Until I understood. See, we don't know what's we, we don't fear God because the God we have. We can't even comprehend that he would do what he's going to do. That's beyond our comprehension because people, because first of all, we haven't heard it preached. That's one problem. And the second thing, we don't read our Bible. Judgment begins when it starts. When it starts. It ain't going to start at the homosexuals. It's not going to start at the gay parade. It's not going to start at the White House. It's going to start right here at the house of God. When God, did, when God, when, 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 it's, when it's time and it's winding up, it's going to start right at the house of God. You say, well, why would, it, why would it be that? Because you're the cause. The Bible didn't say, the Bible says in the first generation, when they knew God. Yeah. What the church does in moderation, the world does in excess. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You can always tell where the world is going by where the church is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, man, we're looking for a revival. I told him, if nothing happens in the house of God, the country is going to hell. Do you hear what I just said? Yeah. You're sitting in your chairs. Yeah. yeah. Got nice homes. Everybody looking all nice. And you're, doing, you're coming to this altar, saying a couple little prayers, and go back to your seat. You think that's what it's all about? You think that's all we need to do? Wow. Man, we need to be weeping and crying for mercy because we're in trouble. Right. Yeah. We are in serious trouble. Judgment will begin at the house of God. And it'll start with the preachers. So stop with the preachers. Look what he says here. But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Why? For the iniquity of the Amorites are what? Not yet full. Now let me show you, because our time is gone. Turn to the book of Leviticus. And I'm going to show you exactly what they were doing. Leviticus chapter 18. I'm going to pick up at verse 20. Le Leviticus 18 verse 20. I believe the Bible... I'm, I'm, I have, I got, or I got licensed in an independent fundamental Baptist church back in 1976. I was the first black man to ever be licensed in an independent Baptist church in the whole state of Maryland and the whole state of Virginia. Somebody said, he, they must have made a mistake. <laughs> and I was taught well. Yeah. I was back in the day where when you was an independent Baptist, that meant something. Right. Right. They drilled it in me. They drilled the authority of Scripture in me. The Bible is the final authority. It don't matter who you are. Don't matter how many books you done wrote. The Word of God is the final authority. I don't care if they call you Dr. Z or Dr. P. The word of God is the final authority. Look at this. Verse 20. 
Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her, and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire of Moloch, neither shalt thou profane the name of the Lord, the name of, God, of thy God, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with a mankind as with what? You see the progression? You go from adultery to abortion to homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. Do you know bestiality has become the fastest growing sexual fat in America? When a man has sex with a man, he takes on the nature of a woman. When a woman has sex with a woman, she takes on the nature of a man. When a, when a man becomes a homosexual, he has a tendency to let his hair grow long. When a woman becomes a lesbian, she has a tendency to cut her hair. But when a man or a woman has a sexual relationship with an animal, she take, he takes or she takes the nature of a beast. Why do you think that these individuals are beginning to think they are animals? Don't you know what's coming? Because if I think I'm a, if I'm a human being, but I think I'm an animal, then sexually, who am I going to be drawn to? We're sitting here playing games. We're thanking God for a good meal. Good hotel room. And we have no clue how serious things are. Can you imagine? Lot saying that it got so bad that this stuff was done in public every day, everywhere he went. He said it vexed his righteous soul from what? Day to day. And this mess is getting bolder and bolder and bolder. And, and, and there's more and more pressure for you to do what? Shut up. Say nothing. Neither shall thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to, uh, to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Now listen to this. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. This was the same stuff that they were doing, and what generation they came? It came in the fourth generation. This was the activity that was going on. And this is what the Lord says. Listen, listen to this. Verse 25. And the land is defiled, therefore I do what? What did he do? The same thing he told them in, in Exodus 20. I visit the what? The iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Yes. Amen. What, do you, what do you think monkey pox has come out? Where, where do you think that's coming from? That's nature. Right. Rising itself up against the inhabitants of this country. And God knows what else nature is going to come up with until it vomits you out. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a homosexual problem. We better wake up. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna read this last scripture to you, and then I'm done. Turn to Malachi. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, that's, that's it for me. Malachi chapter four, verse five and six. We're in the fourth generation. 
We're literally witnessing what it really means to be a reprobate or have a reprobate mind. Verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the women. You know, we, we, you know, we, 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 we got the women's ministry going good and strong, but the brother's ministry is just as shaky as a leaf on the tree. Women's ministry is going strong, but the men's ministry is shaky. You can hardly get them brothers to come out. What's the emphasis of? Turn the what? Hearts of who? Fathers. Didn't say men, it said fathers. Why? Why fathers? Why? What's the purpose of that? Because it's addressing the principle. It understands the problem that we're facing. Men, fathers, we have to realize that whatever we're doing, because you know they say 70%, listen to me, they say that 70% of the men in our churches are addicted to porn. I just came from a revival meeting, doing a revival meeting, and every single young man that came to me after service for help, every single one of them were addicted to porn. One, one, one man told me that he had been addicted to porn since he's been 11 years old. Do you think there's anything different? Do you, do you think this church has escaped that kind of influence? Are you that naive to think that, oh, not here, not here, not here. No, we don't have that problem. We ain't got no problem with nobody having no problem with porn. Oh, no, no, no. If you think that way, you're pretty stupid. Right, 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 right. Amen. You're pretty naive. Yes, sir. The problem is this, is that we got people in our church that's addicted to porn and addicted to a lot of things that can't tell nobody. Yeah, right. Because we don't have an atmosphere of fixing nothing. Yeah. Our atmosphere is exposing. Yeah. That's what we like to do. Yeah. We don't like to fix nothing, but sure enough, we can tell you what's broke. Yeah, right. Oh, we can tell you what's broke, yeah. but we can't fix the thing. Huh. Yeah. Come on. Young people love to be able to talk to somebody that could fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, "Well, you just come up to the altar and pray." Yeah. Come on, you think this is really the way things work? The Bible doesn't say. And ye shall pray, and prayer will make you free. Didn't say that. It says, and ye shall know the truth. And somebody got to tell you the truth. I mean, the truth just don't come, you know, smack you on top of the head. Somebody got to tell you the truth. And when somebody tell you the truth, then you can be free. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. If there's any place to go where someone needs to be delivered, where they can hear the truth, it should be in the house of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It, used to be, it used to be a time when people were addicted to things. We took them to the church, not the clinic. Yeah. Amen. Right. Wow. Good. Used to be. And he turned the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the what? 
to the fathers lest that should tell us all right here we go lest I come and smite the earth with a curse that's your ultimatum that's my ultimatum you can do whatever you want to do all you preachers in here you can do whatever you want to do you can leave here and do whatever you want to do but it ain't going to work unless you do it what God says this is what God tells you to do you can uh, preach, preach about, uh, preach, uh, about uh, you know, the economy. You can preach about the election. You can preach about them sorry, sorry, how sorry the president is. Preach about gas prices. You can, you can preach all that stuff all you want. And it ain't going to change a thing. Right. Right. What's going to change things in this country is fathers. Yep. Fathers who understand why do you think when Daniel prayed, he confessed the sins, his sins and the iniquity of the fathers? He understood why, why they were in the dilemma they were in. Do you understand? No, seriously, do you understand why we are in the dilemma that we are in? Because if you don't, we got to be be prepared to suffer the consequences. Because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I've done my job tonight. I can go home right now with a clear conscience, because I believe I came and did and said just what I needed to say, what I was supposed to say. What was needed to say. Y'all can do with it whatever you want. My hands is clean. Pastor. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on daily devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.